Hi, I'm Jack Draper. Shout out to Quality Shot Tennis. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Semi final of Rome, and it is, of course, Holger Rune versus Kasparud. Preview and prediction for this very interesting matchup. It's a spicy one. Well, is it? We'll see. We'll see. But of course, there was some spice after their Roland Garros match in the quarterfinals last year, where Rune lost in four sets. A couple of words in the net, a couple of. Uh, words said apparently in the changing room and all sorts and back and forth but look it's going to be an interesting match Hogel Rune has just come off a very impressive victory beating Novak Djokovic and Kasper Rude has come back into form which is fantastic to see right in time for Roland Garros as well uh, Kasper Rude actually does lead the head-to-head -head, by the way and leads it pretty convincingly 4-0 so <sighs> Hogel has got his Hogarun has got his uh, work cut out for him, that's for sure, but he arguably goes into this the favourite given his very impressive victory over Djokovic. Um, definitely has the current form anyway. Before we get into it, though, remember to that like button. Do subscribe if you are new and do leave a rating or review if you're listening on a podcast platform. Thank you to everyone that is a member is on YouTube as well. It really does help us out. It is really, really greatly appreciated, genuinely. Okay. Let's get into it. So Holger Rune and Kasper Rude, uh, two players who love the love absolutely love the red dirt. And yes, they can play on all surfaces. And yes, we've seen them have success on all surfaces. But I think it's safe to say they're probably most at home at Rome, at Roland Garros, on the slow clay. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down as we normally do, which is go through the results from the week so far in Rome, uh, talk about how they played. I also have some stats, which I'm sure everyone likes, but more talking about shot quality, so from Tennis Insights, and it'll give us a bit of a feel as to how both players have been performing this week in terms of, for example, their serve quality, return quality, backhand, forehand quality, and then I've got a specific... A graphic for Holger Rune and how well he was hitting his backhand against Novak Djokovic uh, in that match where he arguably outhit him in the backhand to backhand exchange, which is pretty rare that anyone is able to go toe to toe with Djokovic in a backhand to backhand exchange and come out on top. And for Kasper Rude as well, there might be some surprising stats from this week. Uh, one thing to note as well when we do go through those insights is that uh, it does take into account obviously the the shot they've hit in terms of depth and spin and accuracy etc cetera, etc cetera. but the one thing it doesn't take into account is the opponent that's that they faced so there's no like adjustment being made for example if say you know Holger Rune has played someone who ranked 500 or he plays Novak Djokovic um, it's based upon the quality coming from his side of the net if that makes sense um, which is Something that we need to cater in because if one player has had a much weaker opposition this week than the other, then it can be skewed a little bit, those insights. Okay, let's get into the matches from Holger Rune this week so far. So you can see they're beating uh, Fields, who's a pretty good Frenchman coming through as well. He's been quite exciting recently. Beat him in straight sets, Fognini in straight sets, Poprin in three, and then Djokovic in three sets. A very impressive victory as well. I actually managed to pick that one, picked Holger Rune in three sets, and uh, I said his physicality would potentially be the difference uh, with Novak Djokovic not being 100% either as well. For Kasper Rude, he's had a bit of an easier run of it. And that's why I was talking about the tennis insights, because when we look at that, yeah, there might be some surprising stats and they're a testament to how well Kasper Rude's played. But I think it's also, there is an element of the opposition face. And I do think it's been slightly weaker than Holger Rune's opposition this week. Uh, so he beat Rydonek in straight sets, then Bublik in three, who's been in some good form as well. Uh, Lazo Ger in straight sets and, and Sarundalo in straight sets, who had beaten Yannick Sinner. Uh, that would have been a great match, Rude versus Sinner, but we didn't get to see it. Uh, but Sarundalo, you know, a very good victory over Sinner, uh, but just couldn't get it done against Kasper Rude. So, in terms of the matches that they've played so far, Ironically, all have been on clay, which is a positive sign for Kasper Rude because it's not like they've played on other surfaces and he's, his head-to-head -head is 4-0 and there's two or three matches on hard courts. It's actually all on clay, which is fantastic. Uh, so what I would say is 
for Casper Ruud, this is a, I mean, in my opinion, he'll take a lot of confidence going into, um, he'll take a lot of confidence going into uh, this match because he beat him in Monte Carlo in straight sets in 2021, then also beat him in Basel in 2021 as well. 2022 beat him in Monte Carlo and beat him at Roland Garros in four sets as well. So that's really, really impressive. In my, like, there's not really much else to say apart from, look, Kasper Ruud has been really good against Holger Rune in the past. Now, is this Holger Rune that he faced though in these matches the same Holger Rune as of today? No. Holger Rune made his splash in that Roland Garros run when he lost to Kasper in the quarterfinals. He beats his pass on the way to that quarterfinal. But since then, he has made big improvements, notably the serve, notably um, also his real belief and confidence and consistency in his game as well. He's making a lot less errors. He's more precise. And I think he has improved quite a bit in just under a year, uh, in my opinion. And it's a different version of Holger Rune. I also think winning the Paris Masters, now just being Djokovic as well, his confidence levels are through the roof. So that also makes a big, big difference. But for Kasper Ruud, he has, himself has improved as well, you'd argue. Um, he definitely has, especially on his backhand side. I think he really has shored that up as well. Um, although I think he improved it around the time that he beat Holger Rune. Since then, have there been massive improvements? I mean, he made the US Open final, which was incredible. I think he definitely made improvements through that part of the year. But this year has been a little bit of an adverse year, but some pick-me-up in the last few months, which is good to see. So... We've talked a little bit about their form throughout uh, the last week and a half. And then we also talked about Kasper Ruud. And I think for Kasper Ruud, you know, he is dominating the head-to-head so far. Now, will that change? We'll talk about it in a second. Before we do, though, I want to go into the insights um, that I was talking about, which I think are really, really interesting and worth looking at. And... Once you've looked at those, I will then break down tactically and technically how I think the match is going to play out. So uh, let me just bring that up for you guys now. So you can see here we have backhand quality and we have backhand shot quality, sorry, even which to me is, you know, pretty important uh, just because, <laughs> you know, we're talking about um, a player in. Casper Rude, who look, no one in my opinion would have expected Casper Rude to have the number one ranked backhand in Rome. Like, would you look? Look at the people on the list. So he's had an eight point one, eight point one backhand shot quality out of ten. No, that's his rating out of ten on his backhand side, and the average, the tour average is seven. Medvedev, who has arguably got top two, top three backhand, two-handed backhand on tour, is at 7.93. Hanfman, 7.75. Sispas, 7.64. Sarundolo, 7.46. Djokovic at 7.44. Chorich at 7.43. And Rune at 7.2. Now, I would argue uh, everyone apart from maybe Hanfman and Sispas probably, like, if I'm talking about generally speaking, I would say they've got better backhands than Kasper Rude. But what this is telling me is that he is really enjoying playing on these courts and conditions, and it's giving him a lot more time on his backhand, which is a real positive thing. And he's clearly had and found some form on that side, which is a real positive for him, because we know how good his forehand is, his serve as well, when it's firing his serve plus one play on the forehand side, it's fantastic. His backhand is something that has let him down in the past, but this is a real positive sign. Now, as I said, take it with a pinch of salt in to a degree because the level of opposition hasn't been as high as it has been, for example, for Holger Rune, who's actually at the bottom of that list, um, which is ironic because uh, we're going to go through something in a second which shows his backhand quality against Djokovic specifically. These stats, by the way, were before the quarterfinals. Forehand quality, you can see here, he also leads the leaderboard there, 8.68. Djokovic at 8.59, uh, Srundalo 8.23, 
Medvedev 8.2, Chorich 7.99, Sitspass 7.91, Hanford 7.4, and Holger Rune again at the bottom at 7.36. And ironically, I said in the preview for Holger Rune versus Novak Djokovic that Holger Rune is always at the bottom of these shot quality metrics for tennis insights. He's always at the bottom when they make the quarterfinal semi final stage. He's always at the bottom. And that's exactly what it's showing here. For forehand and backhand quality, he's at the bottom of both. Um, yet, you know. He's come out on top against Djokovic. For Casper Ruud, real positives there at 8.68. Tops the forehand shot quality as well. However, serve quality is a bit different. Sitspass is le- leading at 7.89. And we're going to do a preview on Sitspass and Medvedev. So we might mention this again in that. Uh, Djokovic at 7.75, who's now out. Chorich 7.74. Uh, you can see Rude's there at number 5 at 7.69, and Runa is at 7 at 7.5. So not quite the bottom Runa, but still not above Rude, um, but a bit more even there. And then return shot quality, uh, Surundalo was leading at 7.77. Runa, though, at number 3, 7.35. Rude's below him at 6.96, which is not a massive surprise. Uh, you would expect Runa to be higher than him. He's a, definitely a more natural, uh, naturally gifted returner, in my opinion. Sits past at the bottom at 6.17, which isn't a surprise either. Now, this is what I was talking about in terms of the disparity, right? Because that metric was saying that Holger Rune um, was at the bottom of the back end list at 7 point something um, against Novak Djokovic, uh, sorry, against his opponents up until the quarterfinal stage. Then he played Djokovic in the quarterfinals and he ramped it up. He stepped up his level. Look at this 8.4 out of 10 backhand which is really, really impressive, uh, which would actually top the leaderboard if it was his average, for example, um, of the week so far. Net clearance, 100 centimeters. You can see the average spin. They've got some interesting metrics here. Number of backhands, 135. 93% of backhands in, which is incredibly consistent. And an average speed of 67 miles per hour, which is pretty solid as well. Eight winners to boot. So those are some really interesting stats from Holger Rune. Uh, and also from the whole, you know, in my opinion, the whole um, field as well. Like, very, very impressive stats from both. And I have to say that, in my opinion, anyway, uh, this is a really, really intriguing match uh, f- to me. Just because I think Holger Rune is going to be in a position now where... He knows he's playing really good tennis, and I think he's going to be pretty... He's going to be confident. He's going to be confident. He's not going to care. He might look at those tennis insights and think, oh, maybe I'm going to have a bit of a bit of trouble against Kasparud, but he won't think that. He won't. Not for a second. Um, he has that belief. He said it against Novak Djokovic that, you know, they asked him and said, look, Djokovic is a six-time champion at Rome. He's got a fantastic record. And he said, well, he was a six-time champion in Paris, the Paris Masters, and I beat him. And he said, you know, I believe I can win. And then after he said, you know, I'm humble, but I have belief. And that's the one thing he really does have. He will fight. Now, the head-to-head, though, the one thing I will say is that he lost to Rublev in the, in the Australian Open, just quickly on the mental side before we go into it more tactically. He lost to Rublev in the Australian Open after being in the lead and, and kind of conceded it, lost uh, in the tie, in the finals at tiebreaker. He had a similar opportunity in Monte Carlo in the final against Rublev. He was, a, he was a breakup in the deciding set. He went on to lose that. Now, that could be a sign that he has scar tissue from matches that he's lost against people in the past. I'm wondering whether he might have some scar tissue from Kasper Ruud, especially if he faces a bit of ad- adversity. Now, you'd hope that he wouldn't because he's shown some really good mental fortitude against someone like a Djokovic, um, beating him in three sets both times they played. Uh, but it's just something to note, I think, that uh, maybe that could rear its head at some point during the matchup. So in terms of tactically and technically, how does it all uh, pan out and... What can we potentially expect to see? Well, I think for Holger Rune, there's a few things. Um, we can talk about qualities of both players, and then I'll kind of mesh it together a little bit. Holger Rune, his shot tolerance is incredible. I think out of the two players, that's something that is definitely, in my opinion anyway, sets him apart. His consistency in his game, sh- shot tolerance is... Look, he had better shot tolerance than Djokovic, who is and has been in the past, you know, the king of shot tolerance, in my opinion. 
Um, Medvedev is up there as well, but Holger Rune has been fantastic. His variation as well. You know, he can hit the he can hit the forehand or backhand flatter. He can hit with a lot more topspin. Uh, defensively, very very good at being able to hit with a lot of clearance and deep into play on a clay court with a lot of topspin is just so so hard to then hit anything attacking off that and he gets to neutral so quickly Holger Rune. he also slices really well off the backhand and, and forehand side um, especially on the backhand side he can slice aggressively or defensively which I think is impressive has a very good drop shot as well for the most part and his serve is much improved he's able to get some more free points off it whereas if you compare that to for example the Roland Garros match between himself and Kasper Ruud Kasper Ruud served ex- extremely well I thought in that match and double digits in the faces for Holger Rune, he wasn't there. Um, his serve, though, has improved. He's been able to hit some aces against Djokovic. He hit a number of them as well, including unreturnables. Uh, so that's a real positive. And his return, his return game, always looks like he's a he's dangerous in the return games, looking like he's potentially going to break, um, which is very, very impressive as well, especially on the clay when you get a lot more opportunities to break serve. Uh, his his net game as well um, is there. He's pretty natural the net. Um, his transition as well. His movement's fantastic. Defends well. Likes uh, sliding on the clay. He's just and you know just talking about him. You're probably thinking, hold on, what what can't this guy do? And there's not much he can't do now. But he doesn't excel in everything. He doesn't. You know, I, I think we have to say that he doesn't excel in everything. But he is solid. He really is solid, and he has fantastic variety. And I think what really sets him apart is his mentality as well and his fighting nature. Um, and he is an athlete. He is, no doubt. Uh, for Kasparu, there's a few things, I think, to note for him. Uh, I think his serve, um, the way he hits his spots is fantastic. And that's something that's really, really impressed me in the last year and a half, two years. And then also the way he backs up with the forehand. He has a fantastic backhand on clay, top five uh, forehand on clay for sure. Um, I think it's just so, so effective. Uh, the amount of topspin that he's able to generate and penetration through the court. Also, the angles he finds as well. It's a very aggressive weapon uh, for the most part. The backhand as well, you know, we saw the stats. He's definitely hitting it very well. Uh, how well are we hit it against Holger Rune? Um, we'll discuss that in a second. But, you know, that's a real positive um, for sure. And it's something that, you know, I still do think there's some room for improvement. But he's clearly hitting it very well this week. Um, you know, he's also trying to look forward and transition comes to the net as well. Um, I wouldn't say he's as natural volleyer as Holger Rune, but um, it's good when he does come forward. I do like that more attacking kind of style um, or look to his game. I think defensively, you know, he his movement's good. Um, he's able to get around the court quite well as well. Um, very athletic for the most part chases down drop shots quite well doesn't have the best drop shot in the world um if i'm being honest with you and also defensively i don't think he's as comfortable being on the defensive as he is offensively um whereas i think holger Rune is able i think he's quite comfortable switching between the two or being in neutral as well just kind of drifting in between when needed um the return as well from casper Rude. if the backhand returns improved a lot uh, but there's still something that i don't think his return is as good as, for example, as Holger Runa's. But the real weapons for me is the forehand, especially the into-out forehand thing is very, very good. And it's the fact that he's looking to dominate on the service games. And then he hits high and heavy on the returns, very deep return position, and tries to get to neutral as soon as possible. And then try and dictate with the forehand. That's really what he's looking to do with into-in forehand, into-out forehand. Try and uh, you know use his movement to get around the backhand, hit as many forehands as possible. That, that's really what he's trying to do, Kasparud, and then use angles and his IQ uh, to outmaneuver his opponent. So let's then match up both players' profiles and see how it comes out. So serve and return, I think you know Kasparud will get some free points. I do think Holgerun is going to have chances though. I do on Kasparud serve. I think he's been returning really well, uh, not just this week, but you know, the past year and a half, two year, year and a half, sorry, even Holgeruna. And I do think he will get a chance on Kasparud's serve. Uh, although, if Kasparud is able to shorten the points of the forehand, then he might not have too many issues on his service games. Uh, but he needs to go pretty aggressive because if Holgeruna drags him into longer rallies, I don't see Kasparud coming out on top in a lot of them. I think he will break down first or make mistakes or go for too much. I think Holgeruna 
Um, you know, he faced Djokovic, who was trying to shorten points at times as well, and he frustrated him, and he came out on top in the longer exchanges, as I thought he would. I think his physicality is a level above Kasparud's as well, so that's somewhere where Kasparud, in my opinion, doesn't want to be in terms of uh, physical uh, a physical battle. Then if we talk about Holger Rune's serve, I think, again, Kasparud, I think he will have some chances on Holger Rune's serve. But the one thing that he's doing a lot better nowadays is hitting his spots. I also do like the serve and volley look as well, especially on the kick serve. I think it's an effective tool to use. Uh, and I do think it would add variety that would definitely put Kasparud off his rhythm in certain instances that could be very, very necessary if Kasparud is in rhythm, especially from the back of the court and the baseline. And um, I think Holgeruna will be able to give him, you know, a lot of things to think about in terms of, uh, you know, different heights, spin, uh, direction on the ground strokes, where Kasparu is not just thinking and feeling like he's getting into a groove in his ground strokes and timing-wise, that is. So that's the serve return dynamic. Now, there's not too much in it, but I think Holgeruna just edges it. And then if we talk about forehand to forehand, now this is where Kasparu could have success because Holgerun's forehand, uh, you know, it can be dangerous, but I think Kasparu's is definitely more dangerous, more attacking. He can hit through the ball and through the court a lot better. Um, I think he will hit winners off that side and he'll try and keep Holgeruna in that exchange for as long as possible, I would imagine. If you're Holgeruna, what do you do? And what, what did he do against Djokovic a lot? He goes line early and goes line early very, very quickly because he knows he doesn't want to get caught in that exchange. So he goes, normally goes high and heavy um, down the line. So he won't go flat. He won't go for a winner. He won't go super aggressive. He just goes very deep with a lot of clearance, a lot of top spin into the backhand side. And it's directed well enough that the opponent does have to hit a backhand. And then he's like, great, fantastic. Now I'm going to get you stuck in the backhand to backhand exchange. And that's where Holger Rune is, for the most part, against most players, even a Novak Djokovic, coming out on top at the moment because he his backhand is so good in the sense that it just doesn't, he doesn't miss. We saw that stat, 93%. Doesn't miss. Does not miss on that side. And not only does he not miss, he's hitting with fantastic depth and, and pace with the court and topspin as well. And there's different looks on it. And it's so, so tough for the opponent. And then he normally gets a shorter ball, which he can then step into. And he can either go into on the forehand, or he can go down the line with the backhand and close up the space as well. So that's something that Kasparu is going to have to be very aware of. If he can hit his backhand as well as he has been, he might be able to stick up to Holgerun and then give him something different to think about. But I, in my opinion, imagine that Holgerun is going to come out on top in those exchanges. And I think that could be a real defining uh, def in my opinion anyway it could be a real defining uh, characteristic of this match because I think f for Runa uh, you know I, I do think if he traps Kasparud in that backhand corner and uh, you know he does need to hit with direction Kasparud is, is very good at running around his backhand then Rude will get frustrated. He won't want to make that many backhands um, and, and you know I think Runa will make Kasparud have to hit a lot more backhands than he has hit against anyone else this week and I also do think that Holgerun is going to hit the drop shot as well as variation that might put Kasparud off because he won't want to be so far behind the baseline but if Holgerun is being able to push him back and then hit a lot of drop shots that will frustrate Rude if he's not able to get to those as well um, and then he might think about his, his positioning because if he's returning very deep uh, that gives Holgerun the op opportunity as well to one seven volley uh, or to hit the drop shot as well, uh, rather than just going kind of hard into the open space or behind Kasparud for the plus one play, uh, which I think Kasparud will try and do by the way against Holgerun, which is a really, really good and smart thing to do, which is I think he should do, is try and go behind Holgerun at times. Uh, not all the time, but at times to wrong foot him uh, because he's so good defensively at being able to track down balls, even defend on the forehand side, whereas I think for Kasparud, he's not as good defending on the forehand side um, or backhand side, in honesty. So I think Holgeruna has that advantage uh, defensively, um, but Kasparud, if he's clever, will be able to 
have some sort of offensive advantage when it comes to the forehands of forehands anyway. Uh, so in terms of prediction, because I feel like I'm going on a lot more than anticipated for this match, I'm going to go... Kasparud, as I said, it you know the head-to-head would say he's the favourite. But I think Holger Rune, there's something about him. And, and watching him against Djokovic, you know, they'll, they'll, there's definitely something about him. There really is. And I do think he'll break the duck and I think he'll get the win. I think he'll win in three sets. So I think Kasparud will take a set, but I think Holger Rune will win in three sets. I don't count out Kasparud, by the way, because I wouldn't be surprised, in honesty, if he wins. Not just because of the head-to-head, but because of how good he is on the clay courts. Um, he knows how to navigate his way around it really efficiently and he has a big game for this surface so let me know in the comment section below who you think is going to win and why and we'll see you on the next video